fields have turned green, a whistle blowing in the wild, a line of purple clouds floating in the river. Dawn breaks on the trail, field overflows with crop, a million birds at play in the water's trot. The clean rainy weather and the wild upsurge, in the thick green gatherings, feet take a reckless turn. This poet who dives heedless into the green gathering of nature, whose imagination experiences an upsurge on watching the alluring clean face of nature is Namdev Dhondo Mahanur. Today, in the 65th episode of Granth Yatra, we are going to read the collection of his poetry, Ranatlya Kavita, or Poems of the Woods. Come, let's follow the trail in the woods. Endi Mahanor was born in the year 1942 in a village called Palaskhed at the base of Ajanta Mountain. He completed his schooling from Palaskhed, Pimpargao and Shendurni. Subsequently, he took admission in a college in Jargao but left his education after one year and returned to his village to pursue farming. He began to write poetry and several collections of his poetry such as Ajanta, Dusk, and poems of rain were published. He also wrote short stories and their collections called Conversations and Tales from Villages were published. Mahano's first collection of poetry, Ranatlya Kavita, was published in 1967. In the preface to this collection, Mahanur says, The small village full of trees and singing brooks it sang through chirpings of many birds. There were farmers who worked hard in the fields, who dearly loved Mother Earth and provided food to the whole world. They are still there. Every year, there is a beautiful rainy season. A dazzling heaven of trees and crops produced from the soil is created and the farmer's village is living happily. It sings in happiness and in sorrow. These enchanting environs of the nature and of farms run through Mahanur's blood and get reflected in his poetry. When describing this state of his mind, the poet says, This farm endears me so, I laughed and cried in happiness and sorrows, and now my life is so hinged that I become the word of its green tongue. The fourth edition of the book, Poems of the Wood, contains an analytical article by the well-known critic Vijaya Rajadhyaksha. In this article, she says that Mahanur has had a communion with the woods and the perceptions of the woods. For him, every other experience is secondary in comparison. The echoes of his encounters in communion with nature consistently appear in his poetry. At times, it is the appearance of nature at dusk. At dusk, the sky is laden with the melody of fragrant wind. The golden smile spills over when laughing through leaves in ecstasy. At times, it is drenched in the rain. The bellflower orchard drips in water on the river bank. The yellow wheat field rustles near the pyre. And sometimes, it dazzles in the afternoon sun. The bean pod dazzles bright yellow so, the warm mild sun makes rain song sway in the throat. Mahanur is especially fond of the nature dripping wet in the rains. His poems are full of descriptions of this aspect of nature. And just as every shower gives rise to different feelings in our minds, each description of rain in Mahanur's poetry is unique. Woods far away are dripping wet in rain, mountains covered with thick, wet, bluish hue. We sing in free ecstasy now that the storm's bodies in a daze. Through lines such as these, he depicts the spell that the magic of the rain casts on his mind. The wood in Mahanur's poetry is never there for the sake of background, nor is it a mute spectator to the drama of human life. The woods have their own personality. Manur does not regard nature as a force. Rather, he gifts a body to the nature. He grants it an independent existence, 
as a result the drama in his poetry is the drama of the nature itself in the green leaf o oh leaf there is a restless urge the ripe young millet sways as she speaks the yellow wheat field waves in trance and the rice crop shivers in vain the nature in these poems is throbbing with youth and bright with life so when it turns into imagery it is not surprising that it depicts physical love these suggestive moments of physical love are scattered throughout mahanor's poetry the sky bent a little the henna soaked tunes the sky bent a little the henna soaked tunes the eyes lost their step in the thick of sugar cane the berry dazzled so shining in the moonbeam in the thicket of sugar cane spilling some saffron or when she hurried through and held her skirts between thighs light of her clear skin spilled in the water like sunshine eyes grew on trees not enough to contain her beauty her still reflection mirrored with skirts tucked up her thighs the poems in this collection do not depict only the man's desire but that of the woman too the woman too is anxious for love the eyes are tired again come visit like a bird the woods are in full bloom come and rampage in the field or listen my friend how can i say it in words my beloved wanted in the day i was in the mood to skittish lusty hands on the body afternoon and the open fields like nature the woman too is eager for the union the wet dawn bathed in flowers saffron condenses in the bud a princely bird flutters in the mind of the fragrant maiden the nature imagery in mahanur's poetry is equally adorned with the hope for creation his poetic mind is enthralled by the nature's power of creativity that is why he sees similarities between the nature and the expecting mother the banana tree shivers as she tries to listen and whispers something in the custard apple's ear oh berries and babool you are affectionate ladies the delicate banana has given birth at noon or her womb is heavy and her delicate body blooming like the dripping green corn the cold dawn winding trail in the thicket she covers her belly yet the mischievous trees laugh he thus describes a young woman newly aware of a pregnant state mahanor is fully aware of his mind that is overwhelmed with nature and its beauty and he is keen to transcribe this state of his mind in his poetry he writes my life's entangled in these woods my heart's in this withering cottage as i get intoxicated with this joy take me in your arms o fragrance of words he derives his fulfillment by depicting this wealth of nature in words i drank the cups of nectar as i crushed letters and achieved my life's goal the nature the people who enjoy its company and the poet himself as depicted in these poems are free and uninhibited they are all intoxicated with themselves and with each other this unrestricted and free living and enjoying the nature relates to the primordial human aspiration for life in addition to his close association with nature an occasional poem in this collection also alludes to mahanur's social awareness the summer sun the summer sun once scorched this village the village became despondent it gave away all that it possessed and itself remained naked this poem that describes a drought in the village is important for this reason but on the whole the poems in this collection do not provide much personal or social context on the other hand some poems depict the sorrow 
that is permanently associated with human existence and that too through nature imagery. When the evening scatters in the eyes, the dark anxiety grows in a deep well. I watch silently the fluttering of sorrow's wings in the slit of leaves. Or, the congenital sorrow has stayed all life. Let it stay, I am not bothered. When darkness descends in eyes, my woods, the trees and flowers will be my bed. At times, a mature feeling such as this too gets depicted. When we observe the ordinary light through a prism, we witness the rainbow colors present in that light. Similarly, when we watch nature through the lens of Mahanur's poetry, we witness the ever-changing and captivating forms of nature. We have with us today Dr. Shubha Sathe, who has studied Mahanur's literature and who will elaborate on his gift of imagination. Namaskar, me Dr. Shubha Sathe. नाद हो महानोरांच्या कवितांवर बोलणार का असं अर्चना ताईंनी विचारल्याबरोबर मी क्षणाचाही विलंब न करता त्यांना होकार दिला कारण महानोरांची कविता मनामध्ये हृदयामध्ये इतकी रुजलेली आहे की केव्हाही कधीही कोणत्याही कवितेचं वाचन करावं मन रानामध्ये हुंदडायला लागतं महानोरांच्या कवितेमध्ये गावची संस्कृती आणि निसर्ग अगदी पुरेपूर उतरलेला आहे दिवसभर झाडा पिकांशी बोलताना पाखरांशी सलगी करताना शेतीचं कष्टाचं काम करताना हे रान हा निसर्ग त्यांच्या श्वासात आणि मनात रुजत गेला रानातलं सौंदर्य जे डोळ्यांनी टिपलं जे मनात उतरलं जे हृदयात रेंगाळलं ते शब्दरूप घेऊन अवतरलं आणि मग आठ दहा कविता नियतकालिकाकडे पाठवून दिल्या पण त्या परत आल्या कुणीतरी म्हटलंय तू खेड्यातला पोरगा तुला कोण विचारताय पण मग त्यानंतर प्रतिमा आणि लय यावर विचार करत छंदांची नवी वीण घेऊन कविता अवतरली आणि मग तेरा कविता कुसुमाग्रजांकडे पाठवल्या त्यांना त्या इतक्या आवडल्या त्यांनी महानोरांना पत्रच धाडलं मी तुमच्यावर बेहद्द खुश आहे मला येऊन नक्की भेटा आणि मग एकोणीसशे चौसष्टमध्ये मौजच्या दिवाळी अंकामध्ये चार रानातल्या कविता प्रसिद्ध झाल्या पु ल देशपांडे मौजमध्ये जाऊन त्यांनी महानोरांचा पत्ता शोधून काढला आणि त्यांना कळवलं दिवाळीच काय माझं तर वर्ष साजरं झालं तेव्हा पु ल महानोरांना ओळखत नव्हते मग एकोणीसशे सदुसष्टमध्ये पॉप्युलर प्रकाशननी नवे कवी नवी कविता या मालिकेमध्ये महानोरांच्या रानातल्या कविता प्रकाशित केल्या रान शिवाराची चैतन्यांनी ओथंबलेली कविता म्हणून तिचा गौरव झाला बाबा बोरकरांनी सुद्धा सत्यकथेमधून त्याला मस्त दाद दिली ह्या नभाने ह्या भुईला दान द्यावे आणि त्या माती तुनी चैतन्य गावे कोण ती पुष्पे अशी येती फळाला जोंधळ्याला चांदणे लखडून जावे महानोरांचं रानावर अतोनात प्रेम आणि रानाचंही त्यांच्यावर प्रेम महानोर रानाशीच त्यांच्या सुखदुःखाच्या गोष्टी बोलत कदाचित रानही त्यांच्याशी बोलत असणारच आणि म्हणून त्यांना रानाच्या संवेदना किती जाणवल्या आहेत हे आपल्याला त्यांच्या कवितेतून जाणवतं निसर्गानुभूतीचं चित्र रेखाटताना कवी लिहितात पक्ष्यांचे लक्ष थवे गगनाला पंख नवे वाऱ्यावर गंध भार भरलेले ओचे झाडातून लत बदले बहर कांचनाचे घनवाजत गाजत ये थेंब अमृताचे रानातल्या कविता शेतीवाडीत जगत असलेल्या खेड्यातल्या निसर्गाचा एक अविभाज्य घटक झालेल्या एका जातीवंत शेतकऱ्याची ही कविता आहे ही कविता निसर्गाचे भावभावनांचे निर्मळ आणि लयबद्ध चित्रण करते त्यामुळे महानोरांची कविता आपण वाचत नाहीच आपण ती गुणगुणतो आणि त्या लईमध्ये भान हरपून जातो घ्यायचाय अनुभव ऐका तर मग हिरव्या पानात पानात काही चावळ चालते भर ज्वानीतली ज्वार अंग मोडीत बोलते 
शेत गव्हाच पिवळे जरा नशेत झुलते आणि साळीचे उगाच अंग शहारून येते पोटऱ्यातल गव्हाचे हसू ओंब्यात दाटते केळ कातीव रूपाची छाया पाण्यात शोधते दहावीस एकराच्या शेतीमध्ये कापूस तुरी ज्वारी बाजरी अशी पिकं एकमेकांच्या जोडीनी पेरलेली बहरलेली असतात एक दुसऱ्यांना वाऱ्याच्या हेलकाव्याने ती भेटतात सरमिसळ होतात वास्तवातलं हे विलोभनीय चित्र त्या वाऱ्याच्या हेलकाव्याची लय घेऊनच आपल्या मनात उतरत हिरव्या पानात पानात काही चावळ चालते भर ज्वनीत ली ज्वार अंग मोडीत बोलते भर ज्वनीत ली ज्वार अंग मोडीत बोलते धन्यवाद Do read N.D. Mahanur's poetry that is immersed in conversations with nature and that delights us with its rhythm. We shall meet in the next episode of Granthe Yatra to discuss an experimental play. Until then, keep reading.